on this episode of Ghost Hunters International. The team investigates a South African hotel with a war-torn past. You just saw a fleeting glimpse of a woman. You heard that too. Can the investigators capture evidence of a suicidal spirit? Stop recording. And the battery's fine? I think we're directly challenging it, which isn't a good idea. Well, I challenge you. Show us how strong you really are. <laughs> then, the team investigates an ancient fortress with a history of brutal torture. I feel like I'm a prisoner in here myself. What was that? You all right? So I'm gonna pass the walkie over to her. Hey guys, our next investigation is at Nottingham Road Hotel in KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. Uh, some of the paranormal activities include a ghost named Charlotte. Uh, she's been known to rearrange floral arrangements, uh, also fold clothes that have been thrown on the floor. She's been seen throughout the hotel. There have been actual uh, faux-bodied manifestations. Brandy, with it being a hotel, I'm concerned about other guests. Do we know how many other guests there are going to be in the hotel? Actually, we have booked the entire hotel. Uh, so it's just going to be us there. We will be staying in the haunted rooms ourselves, so we'll be able to do investigations uh, the entire time. Well, Brandy, thank you for bringing this one forward. It sounds like a really good case. Absolutely. It should be a lot of fun. Oh, there we go. Nottingham Road. There it is. Hello there. Rob, how are you? How you doing? I'm Andy. Andy. I'm Barry. Hi. How are you doing? Welcome to Nottingham Road Hotel. When was the hotel itself opened? The history of the hotel dates back to 1880. At that stage, South Africa was controlled by the Boers, or which is an Afrikaans word for the name farmers, and they had found gold on the Witwatersrand, which is now Johannesburg. And the Brits wanted to control what was then South Africa, and uh, we experienced what we call the Anglo-Boer War. How did the, the hotel play a role during the war? Well, at that stage, the main source of transport to get to the battlefields was the rail link, and uh, the hotel was immediately adjacent to that, so we had large numbers of military personnel passing through this village. We are led to believe that uh, Charlotte is our ghost that we have here. Charlotte was a lady, a prostitute that was working at the hotel, and one of uh, the men that came off the train she fell deeply in love with, uh, he then was killed on the battlefield. In sympathy, she jumped out of a window, was uh, very badly injured, and then passed away because of her injuries. Charlotte materialized in about 1902, and the legend of Charlotte now lives in our hotel. Do you mind giving us a tour and showing us around? Absolutely. Follow me and we'll go through and have All a look. All right, sounds good. This is room number two. Um, the experiences we've had here of a mother and daughter in this particular bedroom. The mother waking up with a tremendous pressure on her chest. The instant her daughter touched the mother, this presence disappeared completely. Mm, interesting. A lady patron continued back to reception and I happened to be there and she said to me, tell me about your friend. And I said, which friend? She said, no, you know who I'm talking about. And I said, Charlotte. But she certainly saw what we call Charlotte here. It wasn't in the form of a blur or anything. She was very clear that she was incredibly well dressed and very friendly. Uh, when I'd finished speaking to her, she said to her husband to come and have a look as well. He came down the stairs and had a visual of Charlotte leaning against the balustrade here. This is room number 10. This is where we've had most of our experiences. We have had stories of uh, children being in the rooms and their parents hearing them speaking and then saying, well, who are you speaking to? And they say, no, that pretty lady there. We've found flowers being rearranged. We've found pictures on the floor. Not broken, but very neatly placed on the floor. And nobody had been into this room. I did have an experience which frightened me. I was woken by the sound of water running. So I, I closed it tightly, screwed it down, went back to bed. I woke up and the tap was running again. My hair was standing up in the back of my head and I closed the tap 
quite forcefully and I ran out of the room as fast as I could. So where are we off to next? Um, this was our most recent experience that we've had with a guest staying in the room. One of the gentlemen was lying in bed watching television. Television just went off. He pressed the remote and the television came on. Um, he wasn't quite sure what was going on. Two minutes later, the light went off. Turned on the light switch and the light switch came on. The gentleman then very kindly said he wouldn't stay here anymore and uh, <laughs> he moved in with a friend further down the passage. One of my staff, as he looked up, he just saw a fleeting glimpse of a woman going through that door across to my right-hand side there. I could see the outline clear as day, but I could see straight through her. She was walking away from me going into the conference room. So I kind of got her fright and ran back to the bar and forgot about the milkshakes completely. Well, thank you very much for the tour. We'll go grab our stuff and get ready to investigate. I look forward to that. All right, thanks. I think we gave them a fairly good idea of what we've experienced in our hotel. And it's up to the technology and hopefully their expertise to now come up with uh, a few results. Did you already change the batteries in the handicap? These? Yeah. Yes, they're new batteries. We have the story of a prostitute, Charlotte, who died on the premises and has been seen all over the place. So when you have so many reports of a full-bodied apparition, that means that your chances of catching something here go up dramatically. This room, apparently, we will not be going completely lights out in unless the ghost decides that's what it wants to do. So what do we got for images here? Starting on the ground floor, we want to cover the back corridor, the, 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 the old kitchen. Leading through into the stairwell, we're keeping the camera down low so that we can catch the lady that was seen on the staircase. Now leading into the bedrooms, room 10, we have two trigger objects set up. The flowers that were rearranged. We also have the clothes set on the bed. Trigger objects are things that you'd plant in a location if you have reason to believe that a spirit might move or otherwise manipulate the object. Typically, we'll put a camera on that object to see if there's any movement. Now, leading into Dustin's room, we also have two trigger objects. You can see the TV, which has been left on, mm -hmm. um, and also the light. All right, let's get the lights out. stairs where the couple actually saw Charlotte and normally I don't want to just throw a story out but I've never heard a story like that where it's like I saw a ghost five minutes ago come take a look and the ghost is still there they come back and the ghost is still there yeah I've never heard of that all right so this room we got a lot of activity well this is the hot spot this is where Charlotte supposedly committed suicide this was her room and whoa that one gave me a start. Flowers that Barry put in here. Well, this is a little different. We don't normally do a thermal sweep with lights on. But yeah. And the TV. Well, we got standard heat sinks from the light and the TV. But that's about it. Well, I think we got everything that they reported on thermal. Thermal sweep is complete. What the hell is that? You heard that too? Yeah. What the hell is that? You heard that too? What does it sound like to you? Like yelling, arguing, like a conversation. I think it's gotta be something outside. I mean, I can still hear it faint. Coming from that direction, right there. And that's towards the center of the house. There's some kind of sound up there. I just heard it from the back. There it is. We got a rowdy eight-year-old party next door. <laughs> Things just sitting up there, Barry. Just keep an eye on that, Dustin, if it should start to claim. EVP session, Dustin and Barry in room 11. If you were responsible for switching off the television and or the lights, can we ask that you do it again? 
one of the previous guests of that particular room complained that the lamp and the TV were switched off on several occasions. Um, so we set those up to see if they are going to get switched off. How often did you stay here? How are you meal? Can you give us a sign, any sign that you're here? Room 10 is known as Charlotte's Room, reportedly the most haunted room in the entire hotel, including reports of the faucet turning on and off by itself. I asked Dustin, Barry, and Andy to head in and see if they could debunk the faucet. That's where the taps turned on. I would actually like to run a small test with those taps. Andy, if you could join me just for a quick second. Sure. Now, it was the hot tap came on. Okay, okay. we understand that. Mm -hmm. What we do know is that at the moment, it's cold. So we'll need to heat it up. Let it run until it's scalding hot. Turn it off loosely and see if it turns back on. Andy and Barry decided to uh, figure out if they could recreate uh, the running water. Right, does it come back on? There we go. Mm. Contraction of the rubber washer on the inside as soon as the heat hits it. Mm -hmm. Good job, Barry. So there's our hot tap problem. Just needed to be turned off tightly enough. It turns out they're pretty good amateur plumbers. Reminds me of two other plumbers that became ghost hunters who would uh, be pretty proud of these guys. How did everything go up in room 10? We put forward a lot of questions and we tried some different approaches. Now what I'd, I'd like to do now is... <laughs> Andy, get up there and check that out. The story that we were told was that the TV went off by itself, the guests came down, found someone who worked here, they went back up and they were able to turn it on immediately. So as I went up, I took a look at it and I actually found a timer button on the remote. Uh, it's very simple. All you have to do is push on it once and it sets itself. One of the eyewitnesses apparently seen a female walking out of there. Now she had a certain amount of fluorescence about her. I think if we run an EVP session in the old part of the kitchen and see what we get there. If there is anyone with us tonight, please come the kitchen can you please make a noise so that we can be aware of your presence do you understand that you're dead I shut the, the first spectrum down and want to concentrate a lot on the EVP within the old kitchen getting a bit creepy in here now it's gotten Almost colder, I yeah. thought. Something caught my eye over to the left hand side and flashed out up here and back over here. Did you see a flashlight? I, I did, it got lighter. So there is no way a light can get in there? There's no window, nothing. It's very interesting indeed. Just you saw there. that? Just with it. It was actually a little further in. We understand that you're trying to show yourself. I thought that was maybe you. Touch my hand. Can you reach out and touch Brandy's hand? I had my hand through the doorway. It started getting colder and colder. I actually feel like a cold. Mm -hmm. I think we're directly challenging it, which isn't a good idea. Back off a little. And as we kept stepping back, the, the coldness actually was pushing towards us. I'm feeling the cold emanating all the way out here, and it wasn't before. Do you feel it? Mm -hmm. It's coming right out. Yeah, I'm actually feeling it like way back here. What's that over there? What's that over there? I thought I'd seen something move over there. As we took a step back, this chill just seemed to filter out from the old storage chamber. I need to get upstairs. I need to get the equipment that I was using in room 11. I'll bring it down here. I think we found ourselves in a unique opportunity to find out how this reacts with, with technology. We're going to need that. We're going to drag over this as much as 
as we can. Proposal. We have been challenged. You continue to run with EVB. <laughs> Many people believe that when the positive ion count begins to rise in an area, the paranormal activity is about to take place. Why are you here? What do you want? Please come forward and make your presence known. as we challenged what was there raised sharply yes we were challenging it and it was retaliating by creating an atmosphere i get that coldness coming around me again did you see that mm-hmm. what just happened there what was that something coming with us stop recording and the battery's fine Battery's fine. Everything's fine. Should we report them to the guys and let them know what's going on here? We got some good activity in the kitchen. In fact, I was running the positive ion counter. I just wanted to notice on this. Effectively, we we're being told that there should be a storm outside. There's not. There's not. This is in. This is inside. All right, let's keep going. We'll sure. see if we can't capture some more events. Good luck, everybody. All right. This is where the woman was awakened by the feeling of pressure on her chest. There are a couple of scientific reasons why that could have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, one is uh, hypnopompic paralysis. The body's natural defense mechanism that shuts down all movement in the body to protect you from hurting yourself while you're dreaming. You can feel like you're being pinned down. This is what I say we should see if we can get anyone to push down, push down on, on me. Yeah, there you okay. go. EVP session, Brandy and Andy in room two. Brandy began to ask just regular EVP questions. I snapped some digital photos. After a while, we found that nothing was really happening and we decided to switch it up. I figured, well, if Brandy was kind of acting and asking questions in a very civil manner, I thought maybe it was time to provoke a little bit and see if perhaps that might entice something to happen. I'm going to give you one last chance to let us know that you're here. Well, I challenge you. I challenge you right now, go ahead, press down on my chest, see if it has the same effect. Show us how strong you really are. Go ahead, do it right now. All right guys, let's get the lights on and uh, meet up at Central Command. We had a great investigation tonight. Um, We're well coordinated. Everyone gave great effort. We definitely need to get some rest and see tomorrow if we can uh, get some evidence out of all this. Randy and myself will sit down, go through the evidence and see what we get. That was a very good night we had. I'm hoping that the mini DVs have caught something, so I want to get straight into that. If you wouldn't mind covering digital voice recorders for me, let's just get started. Sounds good. interesting one for you. This one is in the kitchen. Oh, yes. And you mentioned the room just starting to feel creepier. Mm -hmm. Take a listen to this. Now, that was a real good one. Um, (laughs) I think the guys are going to be really impressed with that one. I have another good one for you. How are you? Good and you. Good. How are you? How are you? Good and you. Very good. So, first things first, we had some personal experiences that we'd like to share with you. What you told us was we were open to go anywhere in the hotel. And one of the places that one of the teams went was the old kitchen. Now, as they were investigating in there, they started seeing a light, a fluorescence in the back area of the kitchen in which, as you know, there's no windows in that back area. There's no light coming in. Okay. And yet they were seeing these flashes of light. Okay. 
So now they start looking at an ion counter. Many people believe that when the positive ion count starts to rise, the paranormal activity is about to take place. Well, in this one, it didn't just rise, it skyrocketed. He checks the barometer. According to the barometer, we've got a massive storm outside. As you know, when we investigate, it was a beautiful, clear night. And at the same time, he has a digital voice recorder and he's asking questions and talking about what's going on in the room. That's called EVP, an electronic voice phenomenon. Okay. I'd like for you to listen to something right here. The first thing you're going to hear is Barry saying, it's getting a little creepy in here. Yeah, yeah. There's a response from someone that nobody else saw in that room. It's yes. Is it yes? Yeah. I can hear them saying yes. Hmm. Someone saying yes. And yet, they're the only two in that room. Absolutely. I mean, there was no one there. I mean, you had the complete run of the whole hotel. When, when they heard yes as well, they must have heard it. No. They didn't hear that. So all we're picking up is what's coming off the equipment. Again, what's interesting about that is that the equipment that Barry was using okay. was starting to show signs that there was some kind of paranormal activity. And then we have this evidence that there really was. We have a EVP. And you can't distinguish if it's a male or a female at this stage. Instead of us giving our feeling, what we can do is loop okay. the sound and we can get your opinion on it. I'd say that's a, a, a man's voice. I tend to agree yeah. with you. There's no other way we can find out who that person is, is there? Well, we did pick up some other things that you may find interesting yeah. here. Now, what's going on here is in room 11, Barry is taking one of his cameras and walking away from that back door, where, which leads to the balcony. How often did you stay here? No, I hear that. What did you hear? I hear it come back. I'd call it a male again. And this is interesting to us, obviously, because Barry is picking up his equipment yes. and moving away from that balcony door. Yeah. This is actually the next EVP that we'd like to play for you. This is Brandy and myself. Okay. We're in room number two. This is the room where a woman was awoken by someone pushing down on her chest. Press down on my chest. See if it has the same effect. I definitely hear a voice, without a question. I can hear that voice. We, as a team, believe it states, ask me. Play it again, we'll give it. I can hear, ask me, I can hear that. He's challenging the spirit. Yeah. And the spirit is responding, want me to do something? Yeah. Ask me and I'll do it. It's something that I'd never even thought about. I never expected to be challenged back. And the curious thing is, you had us come in looking for a female ghost. What would you say that EVP, if you had to give a gender to that, what would it be? I would, I would say male again. What do you think of all this? Every single voice that we have heard has been male. But I still believe that Charlotte is out there. I don't think it's a question that we're saying Charlotte isn't here, that she doesn't exist. We're not trying to get rid of Charlotte. I think we're just adding to the fact that there might be someone else here. You might have Charlotte and this gentleman now. Yes. And one is interacting and the other one isn't. This is certainly interesting because this is what we refer to as an intelligent haunting. Okay. In every one of these cases, it's responding to what we're saying. Okay. Let's say Charlotte is here. If she decides she doesn't want to answer our and questions, come forward. Mm -hmm. she doesn't have to. But it sure sounds like someone did. This has been something that's really opened my eyes. So as a skeptic, yeah, I, I am a skeptic because I hadn't seen it. But from what I've seen now, I have a very different... Uh, perception of what's going on. We are very happy with what we did pick up, okay. these responses, and again, we can definitely and confidently say the Nottingham Road Hotel is haunted. I mean, that's really exciting from our point of view. Thank you. We've had some fairly clear evidence proven to us today. I'm now looking at it in a very different light because I heard it, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more over the years that come. Robert, just curious how the how the reveal went uh, it went great uh clive was really impressed with the evidence and he was also really happy that we were able to give him some solid proof that there's something going on there he's always been a skeptic and uh not so sure he is anymore well we uh we all gave it our best effort and uh, i think we get uh, some good results out of it well guys africa is off to a great start i can't wait to see what brandy has for us next yeah well let's just say that the best has yet to come boy <laughs> hey guys.
guys. What's going on, man? Brandy's gonna give us the details of what tonight's investigation is all about. Hey, guys. Tonight's investigation is at Cape Town Castle. Some of the many claims of paranormal activity include sounds of screams and cries coming from the prison dungeon where most of the prisoners were either tortured or died from high tide flooding. And the bell tower's bell is known to ring on its own accord. All right, guys, that is definitely it up ahead. Whoa. Wow. Let's get in there and find out what's going on. Hi, Willem. Rob. How do you do? Very well. I'm Andy. I'm Byron. How do you do? Welcome to the castle. Oh, thank you very much. It's beautiful. The castle, for the first 150 years or so, was the nucleus of everything that happened in the Cape. The system of justice was here, the courts were here, and death was a companion. Oh, do you mind taking us on a tour and showing us some of the hot spots? It would be my pleasure. Oh, thank you very much. After you. We're in the fourth plane now. This is the front square of the castle. Every stone here can tell a story. For example, I was doing up to a few years ago, and I was tipping about 15 people around. And when we were finished, one of the women in the party said, that was a very good ghost you had uh, sitting on the bench there. So I said, really? And she said, yes, you could actually see the bars of the bench behind him. How did you do that? I said, it wasn't one of my ghosts. <laughs> so she screamed like a train whistle. So where are we off to next? I think we'll head towards the dungeon. Now, welcome to the dungeon. This was a place of pain and agony and fear, unparalleled anywhere in South Africa. I've only been to the dungeon once and I've never been back again because when I stepped in, I got this constricted feeling. I felt very tight and almost, you know, like, uh, like you can't breathe. Even though the door was open, it was just an awful, awful feeling. And I thought, I've got to get out of here. This is called the Lady Anne Barnard's room. This was the living quarters of her and her husband in 1795. Lady Anne uh, left uh, uh, detailed diaries of her stay at the Cape. The happiest years of her life was the few years that she spent at the Cape. Now, has she ever been seen anywhere on the grounds? A, a woman has been seen whom people think was, uh, was Lady Anne. Whether it was or not, I don't know. There are various stories about the bell tower. One has it that a soldier hanged himself from the bell rope. I was uh, an officer on duty here at the castle. This particular night it was a lovely summer's evening and I was walking on the bell tower. And walking past that, I just got this cold feeling as if I walked into a walk-in fridge. As I continued, it just sort of disappeared again. Well, Willem, thank you very much for the tour. It's certainly been a history lesson. It's a great pleasure. I'm interested in what they find in the dungeon. This is the first time that we've had people coming in to look at something which is so much part of the castle. Thermal. Thermal. We know that this place has been shrouded in mystery for hundreds of years, so it's really going to be up to us to go out and find if there really is anything paranormal going on here. We have got the DVR set in the dungeon. On the outside of that, in the torture chamber, we're also going to be running the mini DV and one heading across the courtyard. All right, let's get the lights out and head out there. Because the prisoners were often isolated, Rob asked me to check out the dungeon to see if we could capture anything. I feel like I'm a prisoner in here myself. Terrible atrocities occurred in here. Is there anything you want to show me? What was that? There was a strange, deep buzzing sound coming. Initially, I thought to myself, what is this? Is this insects or, or what is it? holding the <coughs> dictaphone to my ear because I'm getting noises in my left hand side that seem to be very close that I hope to catch with the mic. Are you able to give me a sign that you're here?
Are you able to give me a sign that you're here? Something just hit the uh, voice recorder and the, the, uh, the hair went up in the back of my neck. Suddenly, the, the recorder in my hand was, was hit. And, and I could audibly hear the hit in my hand. Can you come forward and give me another sign? So there definitely does seem to be, um, on some level, some form of communication. Now, what that communication is, I'm not quite sure. Is there anything you wish to say before I go? Mm. And then the, the hand went down the back of the ear and the left hand side. Another ear rubbing sensation. It's going to be an interesting aspect as the night goes on to see what the other guys get. I was thinking you and I would love to get over it. There's a larger dungeon mm -hmm. that used to fit like a thousand people. It's a pretty big room where obviously there might be some yeah, activity. Yeah, sounds good, huh? So this is the dungeon. We would like to appeal to anyone to come forth. Dude, are you hearing music? Or like, I don't know, horns or something? From over here, it sounds like almost like an engine sound. Rob and I were only in the dungeon for literally seconds after closing the door. As soon as we started the EVP session, there was like a ringing sound. At first I thought it was just something like, you know, when your ears start ringing for no reason. But Rob clearly heard it too. My name is Rob. This is my friend Dustin. What's your name? We would like to give you a chance. high pitch ringing. So when you get this kind of perfect ring tone when you're asking questions, first thought is, okay, it's somehow the equipment reverberating against itself or something, but I've never heard anything like that before. I'm gonna turn my radio off. If there is someone here, my radio is off. I don't have a radio. When I, when I was over there, it sounded like it was over here. Now that I'm over here, it sounds like it might have been over there. Is there a way in which you can show us that you're here? I'm hearing it again. Yeah, me too. Repetition is always key in building a solid piece of evidence. Uh, so the fact that that happened a couple of times, hopefully we have it uh, all the times documented on our audio equipment. Uh, that'll help to build the case. EVP session with Brandy and Dustin in Lady Anne's room. You all settled down there? Yeah. Lady Anne Bernard, if you are here with us, can you please make your presence known? Is there a message that you would like to tell us? We understand that you lived here for a while and that you enjoyed your time here. Is that why you remain here? Because you loved it so much? Lady Anne, we're asking one last time for you to prove that you're here. Can you make a noise to let us know that you're here? That's you, Dustin, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you okay. can't see down here. <laughs> Brandy and I did EVP session up in Lady Anne Bernard's room, so uh, we'll see uh, if we get anything on EVP. Brandy and Barry in the large cell. We're making an appeal to any human that still lingers within these walls to come forward. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm only here to observe your presence. Suddenly there's just a huge gun, this huge draft in around me. I'm actually feeling it now, too. There's definitely like a cool, a, a change in the temperature around me. It's only reading like a degree and a half mm -hmm. difference, but I definitely feel, yeah. it feels yeah. a lot colder. Were you mistreated while you were imprisoned here? Let's wrap it up. We can review these later and see if we got anything. Okay. okay. All right.
Let's get the lights on and get packed up. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dustin and I were in a dungeon. We did have some kind of weird um, hum or ringing sound. Thankfully, we had a lot of recording devices on us and running at the time, so we can figure out, was it equipment or was it something else? The castle has seen a great many things happen in its history. Good, bad, sad, joyful, but it's never had an outfit like Ghost Hunters International come along here and look at this aspect of it. So it's another stone in the mosaic. Well, we're about to review the footage of Cape Town Castle. The tour that was given to us gave us great indications that we may be looking for more audible um, phenomenon and visual. It was a big place. Um, I'm expecting big things. Andy, I have one for you. This was taken by myself and Andy. So I'm obviously referring to the entities in Afrikaans. Now the thing is, the question being asked is can you make a noise? Now we don't get obviously a worded response no. back, but what we do get is a, is noise. a noise. Exactly right. what we've asked for. So it was a, it was a very good turn up for the books on, on that one and certainly my first time of using Afrikaans. <laughs> I want you to have a listen to this for me. I have not came across this before. Okay. So I want you to have a listen to this and see what you think. I'm not here to hurt you. It's good that we've actually caught it. It's definitely strange. I've never heard anything like that either. What's going on, guys? Hey! hey. So, Cape Town Castle, big journey to Africa. How do we do? We've done quite well. This EVP that we have takes place in the barracks when we were doing an EVP session and you were taking the photographs. Mm -hmm. This particular question is asked in Afrikaans. It simply means, make a noise. Can you make a noise? Martha. All right, I mean, I can definitely hear the noise. There's no question about that. My question is, do we have any other footage? Did you check in the, all the cameras to make sure that at that time there wasn't a door shutting, anything else happening? We have double checked and it's not there on any of the rest. So it was just picked up it's on the mic. It's just picked up on this one. Cool. This next one involves me in the prison cell. And this one's interesting because it overlaps what I'm beginning to say. And you'll hear it. So obviously it's not me. Yeah, I can hear the whisper right before you start mm -hmm. speaking. One more time, Barry. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to hurt you. Oh yeah, you can definitely hear a distinct voice right before you start speaking it. Well, what I can do, guys, I'll transfer this across onto a disc and uh, you can bring it with you. All right, thanks, good work. Thank you. Hey, Willem, how are you? Very well, very eager to see what happened. That's what I like to hear. Well, as you know, you were kind enough to take us on the tour of the castle. You showed us where many of the hot spots were, some of the stories, some of the activity. And what the GHI team did is we came in with many different types of technical equipment and we set it up and we did a very thorough investigation. The first thing we'd like you to listen to and get your opinion of is what we call an EVP. One that was recorded in the barracks. It was done by uh, myself and our investigator, Barry. Barry's asking a question in Afrikaans and he's asking, uh, can you make a noise? Martha, hold on. That's really interesting. Martha, hold on. I could hear the door closing there. That's what it sounded like. So for us to say, you know, can you make a noise? And then no one hears anything, but then when we listen to the tape recorder, there's exactly that. There's this kind of noise on there. Yeah, it sounded pretty convincing. <laughs> We're now switching to our investigator, Brandy. Now in this one, the voice actually comes in before she starts asking the question. So that's something that we don't get very often, and we want to definitely see what you think about this. Now, you obviously hear Brandy say, I'm not here to hurt you, but it's before that. Yeah. I'm not here to hurt you. Yeah, just before she spoke, huh? To me personally, I heard like a cut. 
beginning to it. So it sounded cut off as if the person was beginning to say something and they were silenced. So the voices weren't the only sounds that we recorded that night. Now what happened here, Willem, is that Dustin, who's another investigator, and myself were in one of the dungeons, and we're doing a standard EVP session, asking questions with the expectation that we would probably go back and listen to the tape to see if we had picked up any voices. Well, we didn't really have to wait that long in this case, and we want to show you three video clips of what happened in there so you can hear what we heard. We would like to give you a chance. What is that? If there is someone here, is there a way in which you can show us that you're here? I'm hearing it again. Yeah, me too. So when we walked in there, it was absolutely silent. When we start asking these questions, we start getting this ring. So immediately, I turn off my walkie-talkie, I check my digital voice recorder, which doesn't give off sound or record sound, checked every piece of equipment in the room. Nothing in there should have been giving off this high-pitched ringing sound. That's really interesting because I've never heard a sound like that in that dungeon. I've been in there at night alone a number of times. So we've been dead quiet. Didn't have a good atmosphere about it, but it was always dead quiet. So, I mean, you could hear the ringing sound. No doubt about it. You've never heard that sound in that exact location? Never. We'll move on to our last piece of evidence, and I think we both agree this was unbelievable. This was something that, as a paranormal investigator, we wish that we get more often. Oh, something just hit the uh, voice recorder and the, the, uh, the hair went up in the back of my neck. <laughs> I take it he's been around a bit. He's done this a few times. Oh, he, more than a few. He uh, he looked distinctly hornswoggled <laughs> for a moment, as really might. This is one of those interesting things. It's almost be careful what you wish for. You can see he's yeah. taken back a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You know, can you give me a sign? Sure. How about I give you a big sign? Yeah. Smack your mic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Willem, the team did experience paranormal activity, but there wasn't enough to conclusively say it was haunted. Actually, I think that is absolutely tremendous. Thank you very much, especially, you know, a great tour and an incredible location, great investigation. It was my pleasure, and I mean that. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. What struck me in the first place was that I've been in these places, so I've been in them often, and I certainly never had an experience like the one Barry had. I think that was very interesting. And all I can think of is that this man was genuinely rattled. Willem being an old time military man, I expected him to be really skeptical, which he was. But at the same time, when he saw this kind of evidence and he saw what we went through to set ourselves up to make sure that we documented it, he said, mm. this is it. I'm gonna look at this place in a different way from now on. As far as he was concerned, I need to see the proof, I need the evidence before I can say that there's something paranormal going on. Well, South Africa has been awesome. The cases, the people, the evidence, it's really been terrific.